Good day, Betty Julian here. Um, I've been invited by uh, the artist uh, Nathan E. Carson and uh, the power plant to give a talk on his exhibition, Cut from the Same Cloth, uh, curated by Laura Demers, and um, you're going to see this on Sunday Scene. So, uh, welcome, and what I'd like to do is uh, start with the quote, and I have to put my glasses on. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by re the renewing of your mind. Uh, it's Martin Luther King from the 1960s, around 1963, from an excellent collection of uh, sermons that he wrote. Um, that is informed the artist and also is informing me about the reality of where the artist and where we are right now in 2020. So I'm going to move um, here uh, into the exhibition a little bit more and I started to talk about the nature of childhood. And this is a series um, around uh, obviously presenting childhood um, drawings uh, by the artists that play with a lot of the nature of what is called the facilitating environment. Um, that is a notion by D.W. Winnicott and a, psycho, a British psychoanalyst uh, who talked about the need for the child, but in this place the black child, to have uh, a space where they can be facilitated as a human being, to be supported in uh, their maturity and the nature of that. I sense um, Nathan has captured this really interesting in these drawings. Uh, knowing Nathan's practice, um, moving from photography into drawing, it's really interesting to see the materiality uh, and the use of paper and the materials that he's drawing with to convey a particular type of subjectivity of the black subject, in this case the child, the gifted child, which we all are. But I think in, in the sense of the black diaspora, um, all of us who are uh, black in Canada, uh, the reality comes with the nature of what's called cultural deprivation that due to race, um, economic politics, etc., the black child is put under tremendous pressure. And many children of color, indigenous children or whatever, um, try to move and be matured and facilitated to grow. And this work here, I think, speaks to that in many ways. Um, the incredible um, eyes, uh, the beauty of uh, the material on the paper, and then the materiality, the simple materiality of, of in this case, non-archival paper uh, for a drawing, where the artist is using his resources within his community uh, to create, as a lot of artists do, but particularly a lot of artists, and there's a history of that, particularly in black communities across North America, where artists are drawing, um, speaking and recording in some way visually the nature of their own cultural existence. And you feel this really strongly in the use of color, the depth of the browns, uh, the wonderful hair, um, and uh, on each of the drawings uh, really speaks to a sense of embodiment and also this incredible notion uh, put forth by many black writers recently um, of black optimism. This sense of our being and our subjectivity is who we are and who we become as human beings, even with all the pressures that are applied in the social economic reality of being uh, a black person uh, in 2020. So continuing, I'm just going to wrap up on childhood, and, uh, which is an untitled series uh, called Children from 2014 of Nathan's. One of the moments of first seeing the exhibition, I realized how rare it is to see actually images of children in fine art institutions, in contemporary galleries. 
Um, so that's one thing I just wanted to speak to about so great to see the presence of, of the child as a subject in, in these drawings. And uh, the second thing that I noted is also um, uh, the need to, in some ways, recognize how everyone has a childhood. <laughs> So no matter who the viewer is, they're going to relate to the nature of that. And I think the artist has been very effective in the sense of, through these drawings, articulating his own ontic, his own personal position as a, as a black, now a black man who was a black child, um, but also uh, the more sort of paradoxical reality that all of us live in, in the 21st century with is the nature of how we also get separated in some ways from um, the experience and the nature of our childhood, which is so important for a healthy mind and body. Um, and the last thing about that is also, um, and I can't help but reference um, Alice Miller, who wrote a brilliant book called The Drama of the Gifted Child, that we are all gifted as children and how that informs us as we mature and become adults, uh, young adults and then real adults, whatever form that might take. So I'm gonna move over to the series, the Negro series from 2015. And Nathan, this is sort of a movement to artistic growth and, and transformation. Um, as an artist, I got this sense in this work of taking on really uh, complex uh, social histories and also the complexity of um, the history of uh, anti-black racism in North America, which all of us um, at this time are seeing a reemergence of a social justice movement called Black Lives Matter, which um, for someone who was a child of the 70s and also very much informed on many levels by the civil rights movement. Uh, it's interesting to see this sort of fluid evolution in uh, Nathan's drawings to a more kind of mature artistic articulation of very complex visual representations um, that speak to um, uh, black subjectivity, uh, anti-black racism, but the need for a cultural kind of narrative through the series of images um, that speaks to being visible as a black subject, but feeling very invisible in a social, in the social world because of the experience of racism. That is a reality, unfortunately, for uh, many of us. And it's interesting to see how the artist is taking that on. Um, the second image in is really um, an homage to uh, Martin Luther King Jr., which, who I quoted at the beginning. And then the third image is of cotton, which is interesting um, and visually... Um, I didn't read it that way when I originally saw the image. Um, it's interesting how this plant has such a cultural history that relates to um, social and economic domination, but also the labor of black folks um, across the world, actually, just not in uh, North America and in, in, in the United States of America. Um, then the following image, you see a representation that is coming at you through the the black and the blue and the browns. And this to me is a really interesting paradoxical kind of uh, visual um, take on this complexity of being visible and invisible at the same time, which is a really complex experience, um, obviously that the artist is, is speaking to in relation to his own individual experience, but also that of the cultural reality of people in black communities, particularly in, here in Ontario. Um, the following is a dual image, um, and this is where you see the wash and the rubbing of the brown on the white paper with the blacks and um, 
the presence of two subjects um, in in the frame, in, in, in the image, which is really wonderful as a drawing. I think this image to me also speaks and relates back to um, the artist's experience in photography and how he's framing two um, uh, individuals, male, I assume, um, and maybe himself and his father or um, him, himself and a brother, Whatever it is, there is a relational uh, reality that the artist is depicting in this image, which I find very powerful and very great with the body gesture. You see them touching here at the shoulder level um, and this kind of um, connection with the body between the, between the two uh, subjects in the drawing. Um, uh, very moved by that and also um, how the artist is using the body and the body gesture effectively throughout his work um, to st speak about the relationship um, uh, of the subjects in the frame, in the drawing. The next two images um, I think go without any explanation. They have become um, iconography of contemporary society in North America in particular. And unfortunately, with the emergence of such um, white domination and supremacy uh, issues within, within North America, um, these images speak louder um, based on their history and your own recognition of what they are and what they mean. Whether you are a black person or any person, this is, uh, speaks to the history of hate, mm -hmm. of social hate, and um, unfortunately, uh, it continues. And hopefully, as we recognize something in it, there will be less of it in the future. Um, the next three drawings are just, I just want to kind of, I just really am drawn to the experimental materiality uh, of the three images. Um, I don't know if it's necessary to know what they are, um, which is what I quite like about some of the, the two, these two obviously reference the body in particular ways, but the um, layered materiality in all three of them uh, show this incredible uh, artistic growth again in the artist and his experimentation and exploring and using the, the materials and the drawing to bring forth meaning for the viewer in particular ways. And then the last three images, again, uh, a dual image here, which I think speaks more to female, the female subject, the black female subject. Um, and also the uh, relational power of how the two um, subjects on the drawing are interrelated in some way. It doesn't matter if you know that way, but it's really, um, we are together, as they say, in all of this. Um, the last two images, um, for me, speak to the experimental nature of uh, the drawing, the use of materials, uh, the presence and absence of the subject, and also this incredible kind of maybe reference to the photographic anti-portrait in some way, uh, particularly the last one. Because you don't see the full face, but you see a face, you see a subject, you see a history, um, and uh, there's an embodiment in the materiality that the artist is, is using on the paper. Um, very powerful series um, in the sense of how these were put together in a collaborative conversation between the artist and the curator. Uh, to me that's an interesting, as a curator, I find that as interesting as just uh, the nature of selection of artworks and how the artist is a part of the reality of how the work is presented. I think that is a, um, good to know in the sense of how 
the artist and the curator are challenging those sort of hierarchical um, relationships in relation to the presentation of contemporary art. So we're going to move into more recent paintings um, and in doing that one, the artist is transforming his artistic practice away from some of the neutral black and white, grays, browns on paper to color. And in that, he's referencing the reality of social systems, of uh, representation and self-representation of the black subject in different ways. And in doing that, I think one of the aspects that's really interesting in the introduction of more color into the works on paper is the experimental aspects of that. Either the materiality and the use of paint um, in different ways, but also then the real representation and embodiment of, of the black subject in these drawings and what, and what, what the artist is playing with, uh, which is partly his transformation in the artistic process and integrating how he's working materially and conceptually and experientially. However, in that movement, it also takes on a different kind of uh, living uh, document. Um, and is it important, is my question, uh, this movement to color to then just reference uh, in, in an art historical sense um, bearing artists, but also how the artist is self-referencing his own experimentation, which I find uh, very alive and very challenging uh, to the notions of portraiture, um, to the sense of the use of the body uh, in the image, and also just play, the sense of playing with materials to create an image um, uh, on paper. Um, so even though I think for me I'm a little more uh, engaged with the past work that I just spoke to, I think the use of color um, brings uh, the artist to a place of free association artistically, where the constant play and putting uh, color in and on the material of the paper is really um, uh, a different type of engagement that indicates a more uh, integration of all those aspects of the artist's practice. As indicated in the curator's uh, text, there is an unraveling. And the unraveling, as I see it, um, in Nathan's work is an unraveling with regard to um, the intensity in the use of color and also um, different artistic references um, and I, I think of course of Basquiat and his language for example I think of um, historical documents of um, black folks um, across North America and across the world for that matter as we see the black face, the real black face in the sense of how it is presented. And that can be troubling in a certain way based on the history of representation of the black subject. However, the artist has to have the space and um, the time and the materials to experiment. And I think this is what provides um, these particular works, the, the yellow just jumps at you. And in some ways you want to resist the color. And also then the deep um, black, the deep blackness, which I think is really exciting in these images in the sense of not just playing and being um, minimalized in relation to a color, but black is the presence of all colors. And this is a really powerful kind of uh, representation. Um, moving on, you see the nature of the double, the double head on the green. 
And this is, uh, to me, speaks to the binary um, male-female nature of all of us. Um, and also speaks uh, to the beauty of how we are all interconnected in relation to those gender representations and socializations that we all go through as we evolve as a human being. Um, it's a bit topsy-turvy, it's a bit uncomfortable, there is no equilibrium in the sense of our femininity or our masculinity. Uh, for the artist, he's playing with his masculinity, I sense, in a very subtextual way in these images, in the sense of wanting to speak about the complexity and the complication around gender and sexuality. However, being present and keeping it present in the form of the work on paper to speak to and also disrupt. I think it was Aretha Franklin says is that if you want change, you have to disrupt. And I think for the artist, particularly here, Nathan wants to disrupt something. Many things that are fixed but don't fit in relation to he is as a black male in a contemporary society and maybe in looking at these and viewing these and coming to some deeper understanding uh, about where we're placing ourselves and wanting to push against those boundaries that are constantly, constantly reinforced, particularly on black people. <laughs> Enough already. And then moving to uh, a form that is larger. This is the largest work in the exhibition. Um, and of course, I'm drawn to this mostly because of the use of blue, uh, which is a color I'm deeply drawn to because of its ability to express a particular type of psychic depth um, that is very difficult to articulate in words and sometimes also in visual work. Um, but is also, uh, in some ways, um, uh, stretching the body form, the sense of embodiment, and also um, wanting to move beyond those limitations of the body, of how we're seen, of what we can do, and how we can do it, either artistically or in our daily life. So we're going to wrap. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of uh, move towards is coming back to the eclectic nature of um, the artist's practice, which you've seen through the talk. And I hope you get an opportunity to come and actually, um, even with COVID restrictions, but an opportunity uh, to either check out the artist's website or, or see the show um, in person when it's safe. Uh, to do that. Um, so check about the gallery hours. Um, we're back here and I wanted to kind of revisit um, the childhood and the Negro series from 2015 to talk about how the artist, how Nathan unsettles normative ways of reading and viewing works on paper. Uh, recording and, and um, reordering not recording, reordering and calling upon the viewer to really look and more importantly see beyond uh, cultural, racial and social expectations. That's what we're trying to do. That's what hopefully the 21st century will bring to humanity is that we are reaching beyond um, these set norms that doesn't serve particularly black folks that well and uh, more importantly humanity. All of us are trying to find ways to communicate, uh, to create, and hopefully present ideas that brings us closer to um, an understanding of each other. Um, and I think the artist has really taken a huge step in his practice to do this. Um, sometimes it's not pretty as they say, but what it is, and I think um, what is hopeful, is that we see beyond uh, the boundaries or the limitations of, of an image. Um, and I think uh, Nathan 
calls upon us to do that, to see a little bit more deeply and to actually call upon ourselves to question some of those norms that are limiting our understanding of uh, other people in different ways. Um, so think upon that. And uh, also I'd like to suggest, uh, which I did to the artists, uh, Fred Moten's writings of any form, uh, his uh, essays on uh, black aesthetics um, are radical and uh, very engaging. But also, at this time, think about, which I have been thinking about a lot, um, is how things can be, how small actions or a small mark or trace on a paper can make a difference depending on how you think upon it and what you bring to it. And Nathan calls upon us to bring upon, uh, as we're looking upon, his, his drawings um, and his artworks um, other ways beyond what is expected.